Time to make things easier for myself again, with a game that I've played dozens of times over the years. A game that I can always go back to and have a merry old time. And I'm going to give its use straight today. As far as I'm concerned, Red Faction is pretty much a masterpiece. A masterpiece that is probably wrapped up in a stout paper several centimeters deep, but still. It was originally released for the PlayStation 2 in May of 2001, although to a dumb or younger Mary, this game didn't exist until September when the PC version was released, but I still don't care. Red Faction on PC was one of the defining titles from my early gaming years, and it all started one normal day. Many, many years ago. It was that time of the month where the new issues of gaming magazines arrived on local stores. B Gamer and Mega Score they were called, and with each of them came a CD. It was still a simpler time back then. Dial up internet was expensive, slow, and unreliable. Downloading a 5 megabyte archive wasn't a matter of seconds, but rather minutes and at any time the connection could drop, forcing you to start from scratch once more. So even though games were much, much, MUCH smaller at the turn of the millennium, downloading demos that sometimes reached over 100 megabytes in size wasn't exactly convenient. And that's where the gaming magazines came in. You head to your local kiosk, pay for them with your mom's hard-earned money, come home, open the packaging, and out comes this bad boy. A demo disc, filled to the brim with hot stuff. Oh, and you also had the magazine itself, I guess. One of the first few demo discs I got featured a demo for this mysterious game called Red Faction. I didn't really care why it was called Red Faction International Demo, but it was. I booted up that sucker, started a new game, and off I was in my new adventure. It took a bit of time to get adjusted to playing first-person shooters. Little Mary was used to playing on his Game Boy Color, his Mega Drive, and with the keyboard on PC. At the start, it didn't even cross his mind that he was supposed to use the mouse to aim. Instead, he remapped the camera to the numpad, the movement to the arrow keys, and the primary fire to control. Boy oh boy was it awkward trying to shoot blue dudes in the head with the power of digital keys. But it didn't matter, because Red Faction was really fun. By that point I was already interested in getting the full version. The international demo covered the very start of the game, ending as you leave the mines. So imagine how happy I was when some time later, probably next month or something I really can't remember, another demo disc came along with a Red Faction demo. Except it was the worldwide demo, and picked up right after the first one ended. Imagine that, two whole demos. Two more than most games nowadays. Apparently there was even one more demo, the multiplayer test. Man, I had absolutely no idea it even existed until I started working on this video. I don't remember it ever being mentioned anywhere. Either way, I eventually got the full version and it was pretty great. So I guess it's time to pick it apart and tell myself that it's nowhere near as good as I like to think it is, so oh joy. Red Faction tells the story of Parker, a young man who doesn't know what to do with his life, which thankfully makes it really easy for me to self-insert. After seeing some very believable advertising, he applies to work on the wonderful mines in Mars, overseen by the benevolent Altor Corporation. And so, Parker heads for a life of discovery and adventure, except not really, of course. Turns out that the working conditions are absolutely terrible. Long and hard shifts, abusive security guards, workers being treated as expendable, there's even some mysterious plague killing miners left and right. Things are reaching a tipping point as some unknown person named Eos calls for miners to rise up and start a rebellion against Altor. Oh yeah, and this entire backstory is told in a 2 minute FMV. Anyway, the game itself starts as you're leaving the mines to go park yourself in a bed, but hold your horses because it's only been 30 seconds and things are already about to get nasty. 
So this security asshole decides to antagonize one of your pals, but it's none of your business, so... So... Wait. Wait, no, this isn't right. Let's try that again. So this security asshole decides to antagonize one of your pals, and things escalate rather quickly, leading to the minor uprising right there. So grab your stick and make the other guards feel its girth, and then pick up this really friggin' awesome looking handgun and start shooting its load all over the place. And thus, Parker goes on a mission to kick Alter's ass, whoever or whatever Alter even is, really who knows. All you have to go on is the experiments done by Grandpa Kapek and the female Same announcer voice you hear all over their facilities, so there isn't much info about the corporation besides the fact that they employ a large array of dickheads. And I'm not sure if that ends up being a good choice by making Otor into this overpowering company whose grip reaches far beyond human understanding, or if it just turns Otor into a Saturday morning cartoon entity who inevitably jobs against a ragtag band of mercenaries, led by an ex-crazy woman with a perpetual case of PMS. Honestly, I never thought much about the game's story. It's there, it does its job while staying out of the way of the gameplay, but I have to say that the game's pacing is... kind of awful. The backstory is summed up in a two-minute movie and the entire revolution starts up 30 seconds into the game. There is some other reading material that delves a bit deeper into the backstory, but nobody really cares anyway, so let's just move on. As for other major characters, you have Eos, the leader of the Red Faction group, who basically tells you to do everything, and also Hendrix, a notor communications technician who sympathizes with the miners. There are a couple of other characters like Griffin, a notor administrator, and Orion, one of Eos's cheerleaders, but their role is very limited. Anyway, Red Faction is... well, it's a first-person shooter, I think you can see that. You have guns, you have enemies, you shoot them in the head. But the shooting would be pretty standard if it wasn't for the tools of destruction that you get to play with, which is still one of the best I've ever seen in an FPS. At their core, they are your usual array of pistols, submachine guns, assault rifles and rocket launchers, but almost every weapon has something to set them apart, whether it be their functionality, their design or the sound they make as you tear the flesh apart from the security guards and make them wish they were never born. You first pick up the control button, which not only serves to bitch slap enemies with, but also to fry their asses. Moments later you get the pistol, a semi-automatic handgun that can use a silencer, works underwater, is accurate even at long distances, and just plain looks cool while simultaneously being something that could potentially exist in real life, several decades from now, assuming we haven't all died from a nuclear holocaust at least. Soon after that happens, getting the handgun I mean, you stumble into a pack of remote charges, which aren't exactly prime combat material but they're still quite fun to use on your fellow human beings. They are also directly connected to one of the game's selling points, an environmental destruction system called Geomod. Surfaces such as walls and pillars can be destroyed with explosives, opening new passages or creating holes below enemies and then laughing like a madman as they plummet to their deaths. And speaking of explosives, let's go back to talking about weapons with the rocket launcher, which can walk onto enemies and has this neat little thermal sight on it. The assault rifle can fire in full auto or in bursts of three, and sports a menacing cover scheme along with an ammo counter on the side. The submachine gun can fire either pistol or assault rifle rounds, because why not? The combat shotgun is friggin awesome too, either firing single shots rapidly, which is extremely satisfying to say the least, or shooting both barrels at once with its distinguishable sharp sound. Whoever happens to be in front of it won't be having a good time, that's for sure. Things escalate after the mercs show up, and they bring their own toys with them like the good boys they are. If you've ever wondered what would happen if the pistol and the sniper rifle had a baby, well, this is the result. The Precision Rifle, a semi-automatic death machine. High damage and accuracy, tons of ammo, a scope... It pretty much replaces the assault rifle as the go-to weapon later in the game. Then there's the rail driver, which is... Then there's the rail driver, which... <sighs> 
Then there's the rail driver, which oh you son of a bitch! The rail driver fires a deadly energy slug that pierces right through anything and anyone. It comes with a thermal scope that allows you to see enemies through walls, pounding their asses before they can even see you. I'm kind of romanticizing the weapons a bit, but I hope I've managed to explain why the developers did an excellent job on the shooting part of their shooting game. Of course, not all of them are made equal and the melee weapons are more or less useless in practice, but still. Together with the meaty sound you hear whenever bullets hit an enemy makes Red Faction's combat have this nice oomph to it. It feels good. It just feels good. To further illustrate my point, here is some footage from the sequel, a game that takes everything good about Red Faction and throws it out the window. The weak reactions from enemies makes gunplay about as flaccid as my chokes, and aside from one or two exceptions, the weapons are extremely underwhelming, visually uninteresting, and command all the power of a mouse fart. And speaking of Red Faction 2, almost all of the vehicle sections in that game are awful too, in contrast to Red Faction 1's short but sweet vehicle fun times. Even if they are brain dead levels of easy, where you just point and click until the other thingy blows up, the submarine and fighter have this nice sense of weight to them while simultaneously being agile and easy to control. Even the turret section doesn't make me want to dive into a box of Legos, which is worth a place in the Guinness World Records as far as I'm concerned. I guess this shouldn't be a surprise though, considering Felician's pedigree. Once upon a time, there was a company called Parallax Software. It was founded in 1993 and they created the classic space combat series, Descent. In 1997, Parallax Software was split into two companies. One was Outrage Entertainment, who developed the Sent 3 and would eventually port Red Faction 2 to the PC and Xbox. They are also mentioned in the credits, but I don't know in what way they were involved with the game. The other company was Fruition Incorporated. Their journey began by developing Free Space, a successor to the Descent series, followed by Free Space 2. It shouldn't be a surprise that they know what they're doing when it comes to vehicle combat. Before Red Faction, they also developed an RPG called Summoner, but that doesn't really matter to this video, so I guess I'm just wasting your time by mentioning it. Something that they clearly aren't quite as confident in is stealth mechanics, by which I mean that they are absolute garbage and you shouldn't even bother except that the game wants you to bother with it for 10 to 20 minutes even though it sucks and is awful and it sucks and is the one negative thing about this game that I cannot defend in any way because it really is just that bad and only becomes bearable if you rush through it, in which case you won't be doing any stealth at all so screw this whole section. A bit into the game, you get instructed with capturing Griffin, an author administrator with info on KPEC and the plague. Instead of going in guns blazing, which is fun, you're forced to give up your weapons and instead take only a pistol and a small bit of ammo, with which you have to try and get by without being noticed, which is not fun and proves to be extremely hard because the AI is completely schizophrenic. Honestly, I suggest just running through it as quickly as you can and only shoot one or two guards in the head. Even if you trigger the alarm on the previous part of the level, it gets reset in the next as if nothing had ever happened, and you can get through this whole thing in 10 minutes if you know what you're doing. To make things even weirder, this is followed by an escort mission, which tends to be a gigantic pain in the ass in most games, but is completely harmless in this one. There's also one other stealth section, but it's completely optional. In fact, the reason I'm bringing it up is because I've seen people claiming that it's just as bad as the first one even though you can just not pick up the disguise and shoot everyone in the face. However, there's a cutscene during this section in which Parker shows up in the disguise even if you didn't put it on. This leads me to believe that stealth not being necessary was just a mistake. A very happy mistake, but a mistake nonetheless. The game has a bunch of other strange oversights, although most of them are small things. For example, you can take a remote charge back after planting it, but it gives you two charges instead of one, so basically they are infinite. Oh, and remember that miner and guard arguing at the start of the game? I think the developers trusted the players just a bit too much by expecting them to stick around and wait, because you can completely screw it up by going past it. 
The two characters will just continue arguing like nothing happened. Seriously, you can even kill one of them and the other will continue doing his thing like normal. Then there's the voice lines for the various classes of guards. There seems to be two variants, but they all just get mixed together, going from one voice to the other. The cutscenes are also kind of weird, with voices and sound effects not syncing up correctly and occasionally showing some faces that even Lovecraft would be proud of. k is also the only character that seems to have any real development during the game. He has quite a bit of dialogue and even reacts to certain completely optional player actions. In contrast, his boss battle is kind of a mess. Even on normal difficulty he can kill you in two shots, but you can also wreck his ass in 10 seconds with the right weapons. The other boss battles are all really underwhelming. You have a floating robot that blows up with a couple of rockets, a larger floating robot that you have to lure into a pit, a few giant worms and the final boss, which is just a three-phase fight against a regular aircraft, a KPEC rehash and an asshole who dies to a single rail driver shot. This is a real shame, because just before this battle you have an awesome Fayeco section where you get to effortlessly murderize a bunch of mercs after being tormented by them for the past hour. Enemy variety could also be better. The vast majority of enemies fall into the standard category of his dude, has gun, shoots player. You also fight some alien things, a couple of zombie things and a handful of robot things, but the last two are pretty much never seen more than one or two times. It's not like Red Faction is some modern military shooter in which it's expected for every enemy to fall into the his dude has gun shoots player category and it feels like a wasted opportunity to not spread these through more parts of the game. And speaking of wasted opportunities, that fancy Geomod thing that was a big selling point for the game is actually a big disappointment for the game. The gist of it is that you can minecraft your way through walls with explosives and for a 2001 FPS this is pretty impressive stuff. You also have a bonus waffle called Glass House that lets you play around with it by giving you a square room, some explosives and a glass house. Unfortunately, it doesn't really add much to the game. In the mines at the start of the game, you can blow holes in a bridge to drop a vehicle down to hell, but for the rest of the game, by which I mean like two or three times, the only real use it gets is to circumvent broken doors. I would also like to point out that gravity hadn't been invented until a few years later. I want to give Felician the benefit of the doubt, because there was likely a lot of technological limitations that they ran into. Coupled with those oversights I mentioned, maybe the developers had ambition, but were running into time and budget constraints which forced them to scale down their plans. Maybe I'm just being naive, but I don't think that Red Faction would have turned out quite like it did if the developers didn't care for it. This can be supported by the fact that the mines have a lot of walls marked with paint that leads into different areas, but at the same time there are also a bunch of passages that lead to nowhere. Of course, these could be there simply for world building reasons. After all, blowing up passages is part of a miner's job. The PC version also adds online multiplayer. If you've watched some of my other videos, you might have guessed that online multiplayer isn't exactly my thing, even though I don't actually hate multiplayer games, if that makes any sense. I enjoy my Unreal tournaments and Counter Strikes and Cooking Mamas, but I do it by playing against bots instead of real people. So I'm about to blow your mind, because I actually have played Red Faction Online before. Over a decade ago for a few hours in total. Honestly, there isn't much to say about it. It has your standard deathmatch and capture the flag modes and that's it. I mean, it's pretty fun since the weapons are awesome, but it's very bare bones and with little in the way of customization. Not that there are bots on the PC version to properly enjoy this wasteland nowadays. The PlayStation 2 version might not have online multiplayer, but it does have bot support. The lack of it on the PC is... mind-boggling. There are a few unexplainable changes to the weapons, like the submachine gun only firing pistol rounds and having a stupidly huge magazine for some reason, 
but otherwise it's kind of the same thing. Geomod is there, but it's usually limited to specific spots, so it doesn't make as much as a difference as you might expect. On some occasions it leads you to a small room with a weapon in it. On other occasions it opens up a passage, but since it's not a door of some kind that can be activated or a passage that can be blocked, it doesn't really provide any sort of strategic value. It's just another passage. On some maps, like Badlands, you can destroy the bridges with enough effort, but really, why bother? Everyone else will be shooting your ass in the meantime, so it's not like you can just take your merry time blowing it up. But even after two whole pages of me talking crap about one of my childhood darlings, my opinion remains the same. Haha, <laughs> take that expectations. I still think Red Faction is a fantastic game that any fan of first-person shooters should consider playing if they haven't already. The game is easily available on digital stores and runs mostly fine on modern operating systems. I recommend getting the Pure Faction patch, which makes the game compatible with modern systems and adds a couple of extras such as a framerate limiter, borderless windowed mode and an option to kill yourself, which really helps me get that much more immersed in the game. It still has a couple of small problems, however. The text in the... Uh, text boxes it doesn't display properly with some resolutions, but they are fully voiced anyway so it's not a big deal. Pure Faction also has a widescreen FOV option, but all it seems to do is to crop the camera vertically, so I suggest turning it off. Again, these are small problems, so don't let them stop you from enjoying Red Faction. And as for the original game, I think I've said pretty much everything I wanted to, but there's one more thing to talk about. Imagine that there is this little game called Unreal Tournament 2004. A game that always seems to creep into my videos somehow. Now imagine that some absolute madman decided to recreate Red Faction Center multiplayer as a mod for it. The result is Mars Wars, which brings you all the advantages of UT2004, such as better bot support, mutators and other extras, ragdolls and delicious chunks of flying meat. It's not a one by one perfect recreation of course. The rail driver scope works perfectly, although the rocket launchers doesn't. All the base maps are there with destroyable walls, along with some ported from Red Faction 2 and a few entirely new ones. And there are new modes based on Unreal Tournament's very own. One of those is Invasion, in which you fight against waves of monsters, even some custom ones that you don't actually ever fight in Red Faction, so kudos for that one. There's also this weird 2D deathmatch and capture the flag mode, which is awkward as balls but I appreciate it nonetheless. The mod comes with a few mutators too if you want to tweak your carnage just right. Very appropriate for Christmas. Mars Wars has its own small changes, for better or for worse, although to be fair some of them might just be technical limitations. The assault rifle can't fire in bursts for example. It also has some modified weapon models and animations for some reason. I don't really have a problem with them, but it would be nice to have the option to use the original assets. The performance is also all over the place. There seems to be two reasons for this. One is the large amount of particles flying around. The other is just certain maps being weird, I guess. Some run just fine, but others cause the game to crap itself. If you have a half-decent PC, you can probably brute force it regardless, but yeah. If you have a copy of Unreal Tournament 2004 lying around, which you should, don't hesitate to try out this mod. Even if you don't care about Red Faction, Mars Wars is quite fun to play with. Well, if you don't care about Red Faction, you would have probably closed this video by now, so I don't know what I'm saying anymore, so let's just end the video here.